But uh, first and foremost, uh, thanks for inviting me. How many of you guys in here run the 425? Just to get some history. Okay, a couple of you guys. Are some of you guys looking to go to it, maybe? Okay. The, the, the biggest thing I'll, I'll tell you about the 425, um, if you want to learn more, you're all just welcome to come um, to myself or give me a call and I'll come to your school and install the whole thing. Um, I've been running this little history of how I learned 425. I was a young GA uh, back in 2000 in Western Michigan. And uh, we hired Gary Patterson, who was the head coach of the T at TCU, when he was a D quarter at the time. He came in and basically installed the whole defense. I was just a young sponge at the time. I was going to bring the video camera back there, uh, tape them. But uh, basically, he, he came there for the whole week and installed the whole defense to us. Um, after that year, they were a split eagle team uh, before uh, Western was, and, and they put in the four two five, and, and it just kind of it was it was new to people, and we kind of did really good. So we won the Mac won the Mac West championship and got in the Mac championship game with Byron Luckwich. And, and after that GA ship, then after learning, it was like a new up and coming defense. So. Um, in Portia State, down in Kansas, they need, they're looking for a D coordinator. Jerry Killett just left to go to Southern Illinois. Um, their old, uh, their offense coordinator, Dave Weimer, stayed there, and they were basically um, just getting into the 425. They just learned the year before he left. So um, Tracy Clays, uh, who was a Gophers head coach, was a D coordinator. So when he left, they were looking for a 425 guy. So I was fortunate enough to go to Emporia State as a D coordinator there at a young age. So. Uh, the first first year running it, you know, it was getting thrown in the fire a little bit, and then uh, and we went uh, nine and three, nine and three, minimal water bowl champs, and we went to the uh, the playoffs the next year. Um, so it was a very up and coming defense. Now we I ran for about 15 years uh, this defense, and then we get to, to the last couple of years and all the stuff that Jed's doing over on the board. Okay, um, it's pretty good stuff, and we found out that. We faced Oshkosh, I think, in 2010, 11 maybe it was, and we were doing pretty good in our league. We were 8-2, and stuff was doing real well, and all of a sudden, all option stuff came came about. And the 4-2-5 just wasn't the best defense, to be honest with you, to run against option stuff. So we started dabbling in the 3-4. We unfortunately got John O'Grady on our staff uh, for a year, and he kind of helped us out how to defend all that stuff, and the best way to defend it is, was to be a 3-4. And then we faced platforms of spread, where they spread us out, we want to spread out more and get and we'll get some more bodies on the edge. We, uh, so we were crossed between a 4-2 and a 3-4, basically. And within the last year, we actually sold out. We, we're not running the 4 5 right now. We run bits and pieces of it yet. Uh, but yet we're, we sold out. We took uh, our staff up to Minnesota Duluth, and now we run the 3-4. Um, I'm kind of out of the, the coordinator spot now as a head coach. I let our assistants do that. And, but I still like to coach a position, so I still coach the D-line. But uh, so that's just a little little history of um, where this all came from. But um, to start out, I want to give you basically in the next hour, I'm just going to go through this real quick and kind of give you a, a just an abbreviated version of how simple this defense can really be, um, and you know what I've learned from it. So, you know, Coach Kennedy said, "What the, what the fuck's a four two five? Okay, um, all four two five is it, it is a cross between a four four and a four three. That's all it is. It's a nickel package. Okay, so TCU when they when they um, Gary Patterson is supposed to be known as the guy who came up with this whole concept where um, you know he quit, he he hated playing being the four three and then adding a nickel guy and taking this guy out and doing personnel shit." Because all the offenses now, they, they take the same personnel, and then they'll get in all these crazy formations with the same personnel. So basically what they did is they uh, kind of had a hybrid where they took these uh, different outside linebackers and made them safeties. They're not their true outside linebackers. They're not just going to flat drop every time. They're guys that can actually cover man to man. Um, and you know, more, they can also play high, they can play low, they can blitz off an inch. They're kind of your universal soldier. So as you look at it, we have a four man front. One thing important in a defense like this is that every symbol on our board has a different signal. You don't have two ends, you don't have two tackles. Okay, this will play in a little bit later as we get talking about it. We have an end, your end is going to be your the true end, your bigger guy, um, you know, that can play in the face of a tight end, that's very athletic, still has some pass rush move stuff. Your three technique is still going to be your stud, okay? He's going to get most of the one on one blocks because so they double the nose on pass protections. Your nose is going to be your biggest guy. I mean, he's going to be a block of granite. Most of the times, he's sitting in that egg gap. Your attack in um, is basically your pass rush free. Okay, you don't like him covered up double tight. You're like, oh shit. Hopefully, he can hold his own there. But he's more of your free pass uh, pass type guy. So you got a lot of different body types you can kind of throw in there. It's not just hey, you're an end. Um, 
Your Sam is more your more your uh, stout inside linebacker, kind of the guy who's going to be mostly in the A gap, uh, not as much pass stuff. Because if you look at these three guys as linebackers, he's more of your Mike linebacker in your in your four three. Um, your your Mike, uh, we call Mike. Um, he's more your B gap defender. He's going to be added into coverage more and flexed out when they start breaking formation and adding doubles. Okay, so he's got to be more your faster uh, linebacker with your Mike. Um, your, your B right here is going to be basically your tip, prototypical strong safety. Uh, most of the time he's going to be covering a curl flat, um, he's going to be blitzing off the edge, but he can also go out here and play man to man against a detached number two. Um, your free safety, prototypical free safety, we play with the field. You can play with the right, or read side, the wayside side corner. We play with a field corner or boundary corner. Okay, our, our, our cover guys, it's a tiny guy, um, great feet. Then we stick him in the boundary because we'll play more main coverage into the boundary since we are a split coverage defense. Um, our Hornet's kind of the universal soldier. He can play high. If they want to break this formation with trips, he can play high to get to more of a 4-3 look. Or he can play low, he can blitz off it. He can do everything that this guy does and this guy does. Okay. So that just kind of gives you a little mindset of where we're coming from. So that's how a 4-2-5 four, four, looks to a two-man set. When we break formation, they get to a one-man set. Um, basically, all we do is we drop that universal soldier we call a, a hornet. Okay, just for lack of better words, when I was in Forty State, their, their mascot was a hornet, so we call them hornet. Okay? Um, so think of some letters that you can make some names off of in later on. Um, so basically, you can drop here um, and play. Basically, you have three on two right here. You have three on two over here, and then he's reading off of the final three guys. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. So that's basically the, the, the just of things. People say, why, why a 4 2 5? Why is it so good? What, what, what do you like about it? Um, it's a nickel defense. It's very fast and aggressive. I'll show you the, the, the uh, kind of the uh, progression here in a little bit. It's a cross between a 4 4 and a 4 3, is all it is. It's easy adjustments and formations because you're a nickel package. You got five D backs on the field at all times. Okay, so it's very easy to formation to adjust to. Uh, we have good foot angles. Uh, it is a gap control defense. We're going to ask you to control one gap, we'll never two gap. Okay, right now we're running a three four. Sometimes we ask that nose a two gap. Um, we never do that in the four two five. Uh, you have good angles to set edges on. And what Jen was talking about, you know, keeping the outside arm leg free a lot of times, and they run them up to the you know mom up in the stands. That's some some of the stuff that we kind of do. Um, allows us to run a split coverage in the back end, and it allows us if you think about it, to run a four four or four three. We can get in, I'll show you how we can do a 3-3 stack very easy and a 3-4 very easy. Out of the same personnel, okay? Because you're attacking, remember, he's your pass rush guy, okay? He's kind of your freak, um, kind of your guy that can kind of do a lot, okay? He's oversized linebacker, maybe, if you will. He can, he can drop easily in the middle in a 3-3 stack. He can take his hand off him and, and play detached a little bit in, in, the, in the flex and into the boundary, covering limited area and getting that 3-4. And we've done all these. In college, it's different because you're, I mean, every week you're facing some crazy offense and all this RPO shit, and they're spreading you out now. So, you know, if they're multiple, we're, you got to be multiple nowadays. I mean, in, in college, they're putting up five to 600 yards a game. I mean, holy shit, you used to hold a team to 300 yards of offense, you're like, oh, good game, man. <laughs> now you hold a team to 500 yards of offense, like, no, not bad, okay? So it's just, it is crazy, and, you know, talking, you know, we just at the National Coaching Convention, talking with some of my friends who are like, and their D corner is like, this fucking game sucks, but I ain't doing something. They're, they're just crazy. I mean, they're, the, the offenses, now we're putting up 600 yards of our offenses, and we're third in our league with 600 yards of offense. He goes, it's just nuts. But what, what, this is Gary Patterson. If you ever seen anything with him, this is how he talks. Um, what they try to do when they recruit or they have guys, they try to make aggressive corners safeties. Okay? So it's kind of like the, the natural progression coming down. The stiff, the stiff safeties go make them linebackers. The oversized linebacker make them in, and we've had some great defensive ends that are oversized linebackers. That's all they were. It's like, God, you're stiff, but I'll tell you what, you put your hand on off that edge, you're pretty good. Because you became, you went from fast to being, or from slow to being fast real quick. Oversized DNs, we stick at D tackles, and then our biggest guys, those, if they can't make it there, they're probably offensive linemen. Nobody, no D line wants to hear that. Okay? <laughs> Hints before we get started. Um, I'm just going to throw a couple up here real quick. Each position has its own symbol. We talked about that. All you're doing here in this whole system is just creating your language, okay? And this is Patterson's big thing. And we spent hours in, 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 in staff meetings, like, we come up with some new concept, it better, there better be a reason for why we call it that. It's got to trigger something in the mind. I hate just coming up with words. Let's call it, let's call it, uh, you know, Pinocchio. Why, why, why do you think that? I don't know, just a word. 
So I'm, I'm just not a believer in that. I'm an elementary education uh, major by trade, and I want word association. Um, create a language. Uh, so we do words. Use words that associate and acronyms. Uh, be able to explain why you named it. So when a kid comes in in the room, hey, we're gonna, we got this new blitz and we're calling it uh, Oaky Cross. Why are you call, calling it that? Okay, explain why we're calling it that. Um, teach concepts. One word that direct multiple people. Teach a concept and uh, developing blitzes. That's just going to be create a sentence. And then I'll tell you about our watch that we use. That we call it a watch. It's a, it's a wristband, basically. Um, and how it all works, that's our book. And then we have to understand adjustments when to use them. So here's what I'm going to bust through real quick. I'm going to tell you everything in our whole playbook. And uh, I got PowerPoints up to Yezu of every little detail. Uh, we got drills on every little detail. I've been doing this coaching this defense for like 15 to 16 years. So you name it, I got it on this defense. We just don't run anymore. Um, so we're talking about front stunts, twists, blitzes, and then coverages, and breeze through a lot of this stuff. So, so first, fronts. I remember sitting in the staff meeting when I was young, and, and Gary, Gary Darnell when I was coaching at Western. Guys, 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 guys. There's only seven ways to set your eagle. Okay, you used to always use an old, old school guy, D quarter coach for Lou Holtz, and um, you know, at Notre Dame. And uh, he's like, you got, you got a strong or a tight. You got a weak split. Okay, and then you got your, you got your uh, field, your boundary, your right, your left, and then you got, a, and then you got your set to your stuff. Okay, whatever star dog you want to call it. Okay. So um, basically what this is, we have a tight front. Um, a tight is basically, we're setting it to the tight end. That's what we call a tight. A tight G is talking to the nose. We want him in a shade on the center and a tight. In a tight G, we're just setting him a shade on the nose to get that two wide. Um, a tight G opposite. Um, this, Gary Patterson was a big thing we called split. Split G used to run. So that means the end would be over here, the attack would be over here. All these guys would be flipped and we just line up in that front. But the moment we start running this, like, I never want to have that, that attack covered up by a tight end because he's our, our skinny little freak guy coming off the edge. So we just call, we just kind of progress to be a tight G opposite, just so we can get that eagle um, to, uh, to the weak side. Outlaw, they're both out. Tim, they're both two eyes, okay? Um, and then heads, we just have uh, their head up techniques. So basically those are the main fronts that we run. Okay, stunts. When you develop a stunt in this package, again, you're, you're thinking of every word. Every, every person is individualized in any defense. Um, you know, for our tackle, his, he needs to know tin and tie. Tackle in, tackle over guard, okay? Um, nin, uh, nose in, nog, nose over guard, or not, nose out, okay? Um, you got to go to the ends, ek, and then siga, ed, and then diga, pretty simple, right? Fire and boot, we have hard to come up with A words, right? So fire in, boot, out, okay? So remember his two words that he needs to know. Two man concepts. So one word, moves multiple guys, we have aim, this is, this is like TCU, just right out of the playbook, okay? So if you're wondering what they're doing, it's just the same verbatim. Aim is away, the two guys go away from the, the tight end, or, or to the where we set the front, I should say. Toro two, directions, you have a linebacker in there, and they start humping around that H-back or the, the fullback, then go right with Lucky and, and get those guys slanted that way. You can do that out of heads, you can do that out of a, of a, of a tight front or a tight G. Uh, Indian, they're both going in, out, they're both going off, pretty simple. A lot of these stuff too, you're gonna use in blitz games, okay? Well, that's why you need all these movements. You're like, what would you run on? An alt, why would you start with a and go all of that way? That makes no sense. It's for a blitz game. You need to have those words every every you know, universal way. Army talks about everybody. Everybody's away. So this would be a, a, a tight G army. You set your front tight, everybody knows it's set to the tight end. We're going away, the whole group is slanting away. Um, this would be a tight uh, tank. So now it's tight, so with the nose in the shade here, he's going, his, he goes across the face of that center, tight tank. Pinching, everybody's pinching in. Bowl, bowls is something uh, kind of neat, these two things. Jet's pretty simple, it's pass rush, get it up and go. Uh, we use bowl a lot for draws and screens, the second 15, everybody in the, the, the world's like screaming, hey, watch a draw screen, draw screen. Okay, so what bowl does is, um, it tells our nose and our tackles that they can play in the shade or head up, and they, can, they have to just, they're basically bull rushing that guard. They're not creating penetration. They're just looking, looking straight ahead. Okay, they're playing um, the draw on the screen. The best way to defend the draw is you don't want to pick a side, right? So they can't run you up the field. So that's why we're keeping them square. We don't want to have them turn and run and pick a side. So we're, we're head up with them. So we have a two-way goal. So we're two-gapping basically. <laughs> it allows your ends basically in in this situation to do whatever the hell they want. Our, our ends love what we call bull. 
because now they can go off the edge, they can tee it up, they can say, okay, here's my chance. I can make an inside pass rush move because up till now my coach is telling me contain, 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 contain. Okay? When we get a bull call on, they can make an inside inside pass rush move. So all we tell these guys is look for draw, screen, and a flash. We call it a flash. So if the DN comes takes an inside move and he flashes in your in your uh, lane, then you replace it and it's just an automatic twist, game as you see here. If he takes an outside speed rush or does an outside move, he stays in, in, in here looking for draw and screen. We've got a picks off of this. Uh, we got one this year again. Um, our, our nose tackle got one um, off of this. Uh, twist games. If you look at the twist games, we have the inside guys. We call them tan. Tackle first and then the nose. Okay? A nap is just the opposite. The nose is a stunner. Your tackle is the looper. Pretty simple stuff, right? Gate. Gate's an interesting one too. It's basically a, a read. Uh, it's a read stuff for inside two guys. They both aim for the V of the neck. Okay, so they're in for the V of the neck. If that center steps steps to you, you're the automatic looper. Okay, um, so you're both in for the V of the neck because if he steps one direction, you're coming tight off his ass, and you're you're responsible for the opposite pass rush lane. He steps to you, you hit, and it automatically it's like swinging a gate. You got your gate here and it swings. Okay, um, so that's what we call a gate. All right. So those are the inside guys. The outside guys, we use a UV technique. Okay, so. Um, if we call it U game, the N is always a talking because he's he's the he's the they're, they're the dudes on the outside, okay? So they're the ones that always talk. So if he wants a twist that that, that guy goes and he wants a twist underneath, he calls U U U. He's just calling on who the stunter is. Hey, you be the stunter. I'm gonna be the looper, okay? So this makes it fun um, because when I get down to here, I'll show you. But um, so this is a typical U game. This is a me game. I'm gonna stunt. I'm gonna give him a hard setup step, maybe one two, and they come underneath. So it's an inside pass rush move. You come over top and keep contained. You can go weak U, double me, double you, whatever you want to conjure up, whatever. But gate basic or game is basically uh, literally single in is, you know what, DNs, you know what you're best at. Do whatever the hell you want. I don't give a shit. We're, we got four guys rushing a passer, and, and you know our starting DN might like this game. Our backup DN, if he's in the game, he might just like the jet. That might be a specialty. So instead of me having to pick and choose what the hell they're good at. Let, let, let them have some freedom, just call it games and just do whatever you want. We just want a four-man rush um, against it. So um, they, they call it, you, they can call a, a you, a me, a jet. They can also call a bull, right? Because the bull says, hey, I'm just going to do whatever I want. You just watch me, just make me right, okay? So uh, we added some other things as we progress. They're not in the playbook here. Um, run twists. Everybody's got, and those U and games are mostly, mostly pass twists, okay? You can, you can run up maybe a UV stunt against his own team, but uh, most of those are, are mostly passed. Um, these are basically run twists. These were picked up basically from um, a little after they kind of did with the 425. Every year we used to meet, it was an invite only clinic at TCU, so all the 425 guys would kind of go in there and they'd sit in the room like this and they would just grind it, okay? Um, so we used to go to that every single year, which was kind of cool, because then it's like, hey, what are you guys, what are you guys seeing? What are you guys doing? And everybody, it was speaking the same language, which was cool. Um, but they started looking at Warren Staff when he played at from Buccaneers. And they, that's why it's called Pirate Pop uh, from Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But this is Warren Staff right here at the nose. So basically, the run twist, what they're doing is basically, uh, this is a great game to stop power. So basically, what you're doing is you're stunting your five or your seven technique, there's a tight end there, stunting them in the A's and A and B gaps, okay? Your nose is gonna hold point on the backside in that A gap, if it's a run, He's holding right there. So basically, this is a good a good stunt pirate against power power teams. And we run this a lot. Um, if it happens to be a pass, you're like, oh shit, our edge just went into big gap. Yeah, we have zero contain. Okay, so that's when you saw Sap and boom, he did tilt nose into him, they play right here to red pass, and then he'd bust around the edge here and and he'd be contained. So he'd be the inside pass rush lane, inside pass rush lane, outside, and he'd just keep contained on this side. The pop was good against um, more of the ISO, ISO weak teams, um, you know, on that side where you got uh, Whitewater, we ran a shitload of pop uh, back when they were more uh, their traditional offense of two back when, um, when more lead poles are earlier. But, uh, you know, we could we had the Mike linebacker right here and then they might have twins out here, so our, our other guy was stretched, our safety was stretched, and it was hard to spill to him. So basically, if he was removed, we'd run a lot of pop games for the run, knowing that we could always have a pass game out of it. So basically, we'd stunt him in and screw up that ISO so that fullback got the track and bounce out here. 
so we could get the Mike linebacker spilling and that, that ball would be falling so here to where it helped us. Um, and if it was a pass, then our nose would just move around to the opposite side. Okay, so you have a strong game and a weak game, um, but these are basically just strictly run twists. Your linebacker stunts, pretty simple. And these are, this, remember, we use a watch, so I'll show you what our watch looks like here in a little bit when we talk about blitzes. But these are for more blitzes. So if you're, if you're coming and you got a, we just want Sam A, we literally run the watch Sam A, Mike B. Sack meets Sam, Sam across the center. Mac, Mike across the center. Sal, Sam all wide. Mike all wide. Okay, so just create those basically acronyms um, to get what you want. Okay? So those are all the fronts, the stunts, and the twists, basically. Okay, I'm cruising through this. I'm going to try to get through all these slides. Uh, and then time for your questions. But developing a blitz game. You talk about concepts now. Okay, when you talk about 4 2 5, you got basically you got four guys hovering around. This can be the same exact thing as 3 4. Okay, so we have our, for lack of better terms, bullets, this is what, this is what TCU call them. Bullets, the two backers are going. Smokes, the two safeties are going. A dog is four off an inch. Pretty simple, right? Um, and then you got your five man package, we won't we talk about that today. Um, the bullets, so linebacker pressures in some way come up the middle, right? So we're going to be, um, if you put all this stuff together now, the ends, as soon as you say bullets, you, know, you teach them concepts. As soon as you say bullets, you end up thinking, okay, there's, there's a, a blitz coming up the middle. I don't give a shit what it is. I don't care if they're crossing, if they're hitting it, it doesn't matter. All they need to know when they hear bullets and on their watch or see it is that the, they need to keep contained. Okay, that's all they need to know. So in here, if you looked at outlaw, you have outlaw they're, and they're coming in. You have Indian, okay, so outlaw Indian, they're, they're coming in and then you got bullets B. Okay, pretty simple. Tight G out. So we have a tight G, so we're, the tight end's over here, so we're sending Liz, Liz, Liz. They're just going to the out. He's already in that gap ready, out. And then we have the linebackers, bullets AO. A gap, opposite A gap, okay? So um, we, we, we'll read those a little bit too. I can, we can talk about that later. Um, edges, smokes, edge blitzes. These are just the safeties now, safety smokes. So now the ends know, these guys know they're gonna be controlling the A and B gaps regardless. The Mike and the Sam know right away that, hey, my A and B's gaps are gonna be covered. I'm getting blood, edge off, edge pressures. So I gotta make plays in C gaps, basically, if it's a run, okay? Um, so this would be a tight G or pinching all these guys. It's a double smoke, okay? Not one of them smoking, but both of them double are smoking. Okay, a tight G Indian, double lion. Lion means loop. Okay, so now it's basically the ends are charging up field, and then the, the, the uh, Baron and the Hornet are coming underneath. Okay, so uh, we get the tight G Indian on the inside to cover the A gaps. Okay, very simple, right? Your dogs are far off an edge. Um, dogs are, are uh, basically uh, you can run your dogs from a, a tight, you know, the split side. You can go from wide to short, left to right, or you can take a star dog. Dog. So if you have a, if you wanted to take, hey, we're going to blitz wherever that that H back lines up. That's where we're hitting it. Okay, that's where we're going to run the dog into every single time. Uh, again, Whitewater, we ran a shitload of dogs against Whitewater um, a lot of times with their power schemes. Um, tight G Army. Uh, so you set it to the tight Army. Everybody's going away from the tight end, and you have a T dog. So where the tight end is, those those uh, safety and linebacker to the tight end are blitzing uh, B gap. B gap, and he knows he's just coming off the edge. Edge blitz rules, okay? Uh, tight tank S dogs. All these, all these. If you're, if they're running, um, you know, zone scheme to the strong side a lot. T dogs. If they're running a power scheme, this is good for power. Uh, believe it or not, because you have the mic screaming down the backside A gap. So all these blitzes, you just get in your head that um, after a long time doing them, which ones work to what plays, and just like anything else, you're guessing what they're trying to run, right? So. Um, if they're killing a power, boom, this would be a call or a pirate, right? So tight tank, S dog A is basically tight tank. We're tanking everything to the tight end. We're sending it from the S side, the split side, okay? And then he's splits in the A gap. So when they pull that guard and they try to block, back block that nose, he's gonna go probably with that nose and he's gonna be screaming through for a run through, okay? Um, so let's. So those are our concepts. So basically when you look at our watch then, okay? And this is where it gets a little simpler. So everything we have, this is an example of what's on their wrists. So we buy them those little clear cards and some guys put on their belts and whatnot. But you have categories. So we have a stunt category, a twist category, bullets, dogs, and smokes we talked about. We have some zone blood stuff over here as well. We color code everything on these watches. So I have, a, I have like three, three or four Excel spreadsheets, ones for D-line. 
And I even broke up, so I have one for just the end of the attack watch. I have a nose and tackle watch. I have a linebacker watch. Okay, and then we used to wristband our, our second year, but we did, we did, we started going to signal calling and I'll explain that why we did that. But color, we color code all this. So all, anything in black talks to everybody. Anything in green talks to just the D line. So AIM, Indian, okay, TAN, armies, okay, all this stuff is just talking to the D line. The blue is linebackers, and we, we take this a step from there too sometimes by having different colors for a Mike linebacker and Sam linebacker. Okay, the kid colorblind is screwed. Okay, so make sure before you recruit them, you gotta know that. Purple is all dummy signals. So if you see here, tight, Tim, tight G, whatever, okay, so in signaling, what we do basically is you can do whatever type of number system you want, okay? We used to do one nose, two ears, three chins, four because it looks like a four, five with the belly. Okay, six for six, seven looks like a seven, four plus four is eight, knee nine, top ten. Okay? So now if you want to say your, your stunts, we'll, we'll go stunt, twist, uh, bullets, we'll go like this, do dogs, ear, smoke, okay, pretty simple. So now on the sideline, you basically are going, hey, let's, uh, let's go sm smoke one, okay, and then point to me, it means it's done. Smoke, one, boom, we're pointing in. We're only talking to the box now, okay? So we're talking to basically the, the six people on the inside, okay? We're trying, that's what this watch is coordinated. The back end, they're signaling, hey, let's go double, and they would have a different signal for smoke. They can use the same one, double smoke, or double smoke they used to go, okay? So now we have two signal callers on the sideline, one signaling to the front six, and one signaling to all the, the five D-backs, okay? So now, trust me, it is very easy to pick up signals in our call. We have a guy designated in a box. All he does is pick up signals. So our offense, if you can, can watch us, we're, we're one of those, get to the line, get a formation, done, so hook. And then we look over. Well, the guy in the box knows every single time what the hell they're running. Hey, they're coming with bullets up the middle. And he's by, by the end of the first quarter, he's got it dialed in every single team. Because defenses, they, they're pretty simple. They're one guy's calling it. It's like you're splitting at them, okay? And then we just check stuff all over, okay? So uh, so basically with this, we're trying to a little bit, little bit more proactive where we had two signal callers and doing stuff. And then we had double, dummy signals. Hey, I think this is, every time we do this, we're bringing in pressure. So then we go, smoke, three, boom. And it's just like, okay, let's play all up, okay? Or let's just play it. And, and you can put your dummy calls in there. So now you do this, and all of a sudden, hey, they went like this, and they, it's gonna be a smoke. And then all of a sudden you run no blitz, and just tight, you like, well, there goes that one, race that, okay? So offensive scheme, offenses are a little more harder. I sit on the sideline all the time, trying to, what the hell are you doing? They're single, I'm trying to, trying to break it on myself, and, Shit, they got boards and they got they got every freaking thing you want to do in offense. Defense guys are just like, air blitz. Dude, Cerrone just yells it. Hey, cover four. Okay. I mean, he doesn't do anything. He just starts yelling across the field. It's like, well, what are you gonna do? Like, hey, they're, here's what they're running, but don't matter. So, um, so it's it's interesting how everybody does it. So that's how we run our watch. Okay, our watch. Okay, uh, if you want to start talking, let's start diving into these. I'm going to go through these real quick. Like, how do we fit against different things? Okay, and this is a, uh, we're going to talk some run games, some pass games, and I'll open up for some questions. But here's how we uh, kind of dictate everything uh, for our linebackers and our fits. We're basically a one gap team. I mean, literally, it's a one back team. Um, so you're going to be, um, you know, on a direct flow A, this is an ISO A gap. We're basically going to be boxing everything back to our linebackers. So we got the step to stack drill like we always do, right? Downhill. So the linebackers are both are both creasing it. And then we got the hold fold guy. If, if you guys run the four four, it's pretty simple. You always have the hold back sides to hold fold. Okay, cut back, reverse. Um, and then you have uh, you know setting an edge, also arm leg free. We are the thing you want to do in a four two five and, and a four man front is I want all these guys to penetrate to the heels of the offensive lineman, and I want to formulate a wall right here. I want the linebacker to get downhill. I want him to step and stack and get downhill. But I want a, bit, a wall right here. You never want a guy running up the field over here. This guy's back here. This guy's up here. Okay, when they, when they recognize a run block, it should be, okay, I got to get from right here, boom. I, I get past my block, get to the heel so they can't block me, and then I stop. Because in run, they're coming this way, right? I don't need to go that way anymore. They're coming to me. In a pass, now the pad quarterback's dropping back. I need to go get him. Okay, so it's different. So once you become good and understand this and how simple it is, and it should be almost boring for the D lineman, um, if they have good technique, uh, you'll be good. Um, then you have direct flow B, okay? In an ISO situation on a weak side now, um, 
we, we want to bring this linebacker way over here to a B gap to step to stack. Okay, he's an A gap player basically. So he's got the A gap ISO. If it's it's a full flow away from him, he's got to take this. If he would step the stack over here and, and then box this, you'd leave a stream A gap over on the back side here, especially with twins of that side, because he wouldn't be able to get there and he'd be too far removed. Okay, so basically you box it to the um, your hornet who's folding back in, because he's tracking the fullback. Fullback goes in, he goes in. Fullback goes out, he goes out. Set the edge, right? So follow, follow your fullback of the edge, guys. Your direct flow C, your power, any off tackle power scheme. Uh, we're going to be still players. Um, and, you know, it's interesting when you guys were in uh, Jed's uh, talk. You know, it's, you'll know. I mean, if you're a spill team, you're a spill team. You know, our offensive guys are like, oh, we're all coming around power against them, they're going to steal it every time. Fucking log his ass and run outside. We know if you're if you're a spill team, just fucking let him spill. Who gives a shit? Just counter it. Okay, so um, you know we're a spill team. Very seldom we box, but we'll mess around with these guys a little bit too. Like if Joe was talking, we played Oshkosh, and you know they do the same type of offense, and we come up and set an edge, and they just run run us up to to mom's uh, uh, in the stands. We'll play games with them. We'll run a cut where he shows that he's going to box it and slice underneath them, and have that overlapping guy make him right, but. Um, but for the most part, we're, a, we're an edge set team over here. Um, any type of pull call, pull, pull, pull. It's very simple in this scheme. When you hear, when, when you get a puller, he says pull, pull, he replaces the buddy's gap. If it was this side, he replaces the buddy's gap, okay? Pull scheme, very simple. So I need to know there. Anytime you get a pull, pull call from your buddy, there's linebackers, all you have to do is scream off the edge of the box and get ready. That's it, spill everything, okay? So it's pretty simple uh, fits for those guys with linebackers. Fast flow. Um, again, you're just basically doing a mirror drill. Uh, you want to stay inside out on that football and force everything because we do have edge setting in the 4-2-5, right? We want to box everything. We're not like a 4-3 where we spill with our um, overhand guys and run alleys with the high, two high safeties. There's only one high safety. Split flow. Split flow must be with no flow. Pretty simple. Split flow, no flow. So uh, linebackers know as soon as they see that both, both backs split, I just go and jam up my gas because then it turns into a one back. As soon as they start split flowing with no poles, it's just like there's a tight end over here, and any one back, you just all you gotta do is mirror up in your gap. Uh, one back, uh, one back flow is just like a split flow. Everybody has their gaps, pretty solid. Um, counter flow, again, you got a pull, pull, pull call. They, we call this rock and roll because uh, you know with that with both backs going this way, if I juke here, they see full flow this way. Oh shit. Uh, and then you rock and roll it, pull, pull, pull. He goes and replaces the body's gap. He scrapes straight for skin off the edge of the box, and, and you're all rolling. Um, pass coverage wise, so those are basically all our all our run fits. Okay, and then you got the specialty ones you got to spend some time on. What, what's what's kind of nice about the the four two five and having those five D backs and the nickel package is your split coverage defense. This was big back in the day. You know, it wasn't just cover four, quarter quarter half uh, across the board. Uh, you have the luxury of, of basically scheming um, what, what you like against two detached to the field or three detached or two detached with a tight end, some people call it Trey. So literally our free safety would go into the game with some checks. He would say, okay, there's two out there, here's what we want you to run. If there's two out there with a tight end, here's what you want you to run. Or if there are three detached, here's what you want you to run. <coughs> or if they want formation in the boundary and there's one guy out here, here's what you got to do too. Okay, so he could just look out there and read the scheme of things. Okay, how many receivers do I got? Here's what coach told me to check it, and he checks his defense. We still do this out there, uh, check defenses. Why? Because everybody changes tempos, and we won't have time to signal and all this stuff. So we have base stuff. Here's your checks for your week, okay? And then, if you feel a knack, if they're slowing down, you have time, and you feel, I think they're third five, and they're just gonna run hitches, let's go cover two. You know, let's try to bury the, bury the low zones and then you get a pick off or get a deflection. So then you can always throw in your little splice that you want. Uh, but here's how split coverage works. Basically, the free safety is the quarterback over here. Your harness is the quarterback over here. He's the quarterback of everything. He comes out and he says, okay, um, this would be for us reading left. So all we do is we go passing strength with back here, how we set everything, how they read. So passing strength to us is going to be multiple receivers. Um, if the ball is in the middle, with doubles and it's balanced, we go always to the left because most quarterbacks are right-handed. Uh, the way you're throwing to that side of the field. Okay, pretty simple. Um, so basically, he's making a call. He's going read left, read left, and he'll call coverage over here. Cover, robber, robber, robber. Okay, so he'll go robber coverage over here. This guy may say, you know what? 
hey, I got two guys over here who's in the boundary. Let's run cover two, because I can cover it's, it's into the boundary. I can cover this whole side of the half easy. You want you guys to screw down and, and, and cover all the short stuff for all your um, you know, plot fills, little chunks out there, bubble stuff, and into the boundary nonstop. Okay? So uh, you know, it, it, it allows them to kind of split everything. The middle guy's pretty easy. He's married to the front side of the cover, but he's always worried playing off number three. Okay? If you look at, once they break that formation with doubles, they come with trips, now it's unbalanced. So basically now you have a determination in any type of defense you run, what are you gonna do with this guy right here? Most of the time the quarterback is reading what they're gonna do with that guy, okay? Are you bringing him over to help on this side of the line? So you can have one, two, three against one, two, three, four, or are they gonna keep him back here so you can go double on that number one? So this guy's the, the main guy, and I'll show you three different ways that we play that um, on both of this, okay? Okay, so let's talk covers real quick. These are some of the base coverage, and this is this is the Robert coverage is basically the four two five where um, you know Patterson was like, why the hell would you play cover three? We want to get nine in the box. It's a run formation. You play Robert coverage against what run formation? Okay, so this is the run formation. Okay, so let's screw him down and let's get him robbing and gain that ninth guy, which they cannot block. So he'll be running free. And a lot of times you look at our defenses and they're like, God, your safeties are your lean tacklers. God, you must, you know, they must be just cutting you on know, through butter, you know? It's like, yeah, but they're making them for less than three yards because we're screwing them down. They're flat footing an eight, okay? They're a glorified linebacker. They should make the play. If everybody's doing their job, these guys should be making, be the most highest product, uh, productive players on your team, okay? So um, in this one, in a, in a robber coverage, basically all we're doing is it's, a, it's basically an invert cover two, if you would, to this side, because your safety's a raw player, he's your flat, he's theoretically man-to-man -man clue deep half. So how this works, he's gonna be, you can see him stemming here, so that's at the stem, so he'll be two by eight on the inside of this number one receiver on pre-snap, okay? His biggest thing is he knows he has no free safety help. Okay, we can't give him any type, any type of free safety help, so he's gotta play two and eight because the biggest thing they can beat you on right now is the post play. Okay, so he's got to take alignment. His biggest thing, his biggest rule is do not give up the post. You have to defend the post, okay? Because you'll have underneath help, you'll have plenty of time, you'll have all time to the outside. Uh, but so we call it a man-to-man -man clue, okay? So he's, he's, he's thinking when he lines up, I got him man-to-man, -man, period, okay? The, line, the, the, the Baron is a zoom flat player, okay? And then he's called, it's called swing deep with number three. So he's zooming to the flat, so as soon as he reads pass, He's, you know, put an inside foot up. You can put it, it don't matter how you do it, but it's simplest to inside foot up because you got the run. That's how you set an edge, and you're dropping, you're already open. Okay, so um, he'll drop, he'll get to a depth of, we want to say 12 yards is the, is the top of or underneath the zone, but a lot of times he'll get to 10, which is fine. But he's going to zoom this flat and take away anything underneath of number one. Okay, so if it's a three step drop, they're told to drive back at a 45 for the to cover the hitch and then out. We're not going to get to the guy, but we're going to be in a passing lane and that trajectory of that ball is low. Okay, So he's going to be dropping, driving back at that 45 degree. Um, the free safety is the key to this one. He's vertical at number two. Okay, So if two goes vertical, he's got a man-to-man, -man, he's got him man-to-man. -man. But if two does anything else and he goes out or in, okay, then he yells to this guy, wheel, 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 Okay, if he goes out. and So then he knows right away, hey, I know that I have underneath help that if he goes out, he's going to be robbing, so now I can zone off to this guy, and all I got to do is play over the top of this guy, okay? Because he knows number two is not vertical, he's got help now. So the robber coverage is basically, he's going to rob, curl, dig the post. So if he goes out anyway, he's going to take this guy, he's going to flat foot reach, eyes go right to one, and he's just going to be hawking. So it's just going to be, wheel, 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 wheel. He's going to be watching him. He's going to be running, is, is he chopping on his feet to run a curl, or is he long striding and pressure stuff for a, for a post, and he's just gonna be keying him. And as soon as he shuts it down, he's going right for underneath him. So he's gonna try to rob that guy. So if you got a curl fly concept, then he should be there to pick that up, okay? Most of it's play action stuff, um, so they can help out. Um, if it's a dig, he's gonna rob that next, and then he's gonna help with the post. But we can't guarantee. What are the, the robber beaters? Send him up 10 yards, sit him right there, and send a post over the top. He has to maintain and bite on that number two, and he's got to try to defend that post. Okay? That's a tough one. On the back side, it's the same thing. We call it sky coverage. Uh, sky being safety down, right? So he's just, basically, there's only two guys on one. He's over the top. He's underneath. It's still a man-to-man -man clue. Swing, give it two. Swing, give it two, and three means if 
he went vertical, he went vertical, and this guy came out of the backfield and, and, and actually went swung and went deep. He needs to carry him because he's the only one left. Okay, so you have a swing for two rules. All your all these all these um, all these things never change really. Um, if you look at the linebackers one from the last one, vert three, final three. Here's one of these two guys give me number three. If they go vertical, he's got a man to man. If his, if he goes out, he passes this guy, he's the new number three. So they do a sit down route and he goes outside, he's the new number three. That means it says final three. What's a final three when he throws it? That's when you're, uh, some people call it three, two to one, uh, or whatever you want to call it, okay? I used to coach for a guy when, um, you know, he used to, Kyle Meister, he's the head coach at uh, Northern Michigan. And uh, he's always telling me, he's like, explain to me this coverage. And I started explaining, I'm like, okay, so this guy does this, and you gotta, he's got to do this. And he looked at me like, boy, you got diarrhea in the mouth, man. Five, if you can't say something in five words, don't say it all. You better freaking figure it out, man. You're going to be coaching on the run. It's got to be fast. Okay? So right there, I'm like, holy shit, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so we basically um, tell these guys, if, if he does it wrong, hey, bird three, final three. It's got to be something quick because our offense, you know, we've I'm running so many in place, so many in quick that half the time you're just like, you know, I'm feeling like this because you, know, you can't keep up. So it's got to it's be something quick you can tell these guys. Quarter coverage, we all know about quarter coverage. Okay, everything that this, the, 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 the coverage is in 425 is everything is just think of robbing and very aggressive. It's man, it's matching, it's reading routes, it ain't spot dropping. Um, everything is very, um, you know, we don't want to, we want to suck all the green grass and open space out. So basically right here, um, a meat technique means, and you don't even have to incorporate this, but all that meant is if you had a, if you had a split coverage here, these corners need to know if you're if you're a curl if you're going to expand out to the flat with this guy, okay. Sometimes um, if, if if there was two D if there was two detached over here, this corner he would just yell at me, 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 I got you, I'm here, okay. On this side there's two detached, he's not going to be there right away, okay. Uh, if, if he's he's going to be inside leverage that number two. On this side he's outside leverage, me, 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 I got him, I can handle him easy. He crossed my face, I'm going to be all over him like white on rice. I don't need you. Okay, so then that, that allows that corner not have to jump. If number two comes out, he doesn't have to be like that read flat guy. Where on this side, he's on the inside of number two, this linebacker. So if this number two came out, he has to jump him. It's more of a read flat. It's like the cover two read, you call it. Um, if anybody has ran that, this is more of a two read, the old school two read. This is more of a, a cover, uh, a cover four robber. So basically the same thing, wheel roll, your robin post to curl. Um, so those are just quick coverages. Um, cover two, it's typical cover two. You're jam funneling, trying to funnel from the free safety. Pretty, pretty simple stuff there. Ten minutes, coach. Yep. And then we have the man's on the back side. So basically, when you get, when you get into um, the split coverage thing, we can run, like, say, if, we, if they have two detached, let's say we're running quarter coverage, that's a check. Hey, if there's, they come out with two detached, we want to run quarter coverage. All right? If they came out with, um, on the back side, if they came out with a wide out and a tight end, we want to run a lock, okay? So we want to man that up. But if they came out with two detached over here, then it might be something else. And so now it's like, okay, there's two wide receivers now. That's more of a threat. Let's run. Let's maybe run a quarters over there if it's in the middle of the field or if it's in the boundary that's trying to cover two because that's more of a threat. Tight end, fat, you know, slower guy. Our our safety should you know be able to cover the tight end pretty easy. So we feel more comfortable locking up over there uh, man to man, okay? So. Um, Lock is just a call into the boundary. It says you got one, you got two, you got three. Okay. If three goes the opposite way, you're vicing number two. So basically, you turn and you vice him. So if he runs a little stick route right here, okay, RPO stuff or whatever, you can help vice him. Okay. Solo. Uh, these are all the trips checks now. So we have a way to take away one, two, and three in all of our trips uh, trips coverages. So solo. If you say solo, you're all alone, right? Second solo on the mic. So that's where it came from. One on one back here. Mike has the back man to man. Okay. The high hornet has a vertical of number three. So if three goes vertical in any way or it comes across this way into the man side, he has to jump him. But if he goes anything out, now he gets you can tell him whatever you want him to do. You can build a deep wall, help with two, you can have him rob to the backside. He's a free player. Sometimes we have him quarter off back here to help post, you know, from both of these sides. You can tell him whatever you want to game plan that week, tell him to do something. But if, but if three is vertical, he's got to take them. 
that allows these three guys to play whatever covers you want on him. Cover two, they can play cover four, they can play robber, it doesn't matter, okay? So that's called solo. The next way we can run is, is what we call roll. And this is taking away number two now. So basically, uh, why they call it roll is we took our bear and we roll them up in the face of number two. Because right now they have a potential of three verticals. Well, in roll, we want to keep this guy, instead of robbing him over here to play solo on him and, and stealing him and not making this guy play one-on-one -on -one all the time, we want to keep him back there so we can double him. A lot of teams in our league, Arnold, Flatwell, go, go, you go over one over there, we're going to take all the other three guys over here and see what you can do with him. You know, man him up. Okay, or, or you're going to have to double them so we can pick on their trip side. Okay, so um, a lot of times you have to keep him over there. So now you have to have different ways to play a trip set over here with basically these four guys. Okay, so this is the roll. You bang the shit out of number two. Do not let him go vertical right away. Okay, basically hold the piss on him, right? And then just meander to your curl the flat area, you drop like quarters. But now these guys have to change their alignment. They're splitting the difference between one and two with a step towards two. He's between two and three, step towards three. Okay, and allowing that ball time. So this, we used to call it deep at Western Michigan. Um, just, these guys are just basically just deep quarters. Okay, there's no robber technique. They're true quarters, so they can try to handle the three vertical of this. But hopefully this guy gets hung up by this guy, he's doing his job, so he can squeeze him a little bit. He can still be over the top here, and this will be used for ball time, okay? The last one is uh, Bulldog. Uh, we call this multiple things. It was, we, when I was at Emporia State, we played Truman. Um, Truman State was the Bulldogs back then, they're not even the league anymore. But uh, this is how we take away number one receiver. So now we had solo, we had roll where we take away him, and now some Bulldog where we would just lock him up man to man. Okay? The guy, the, usually the, they don't throw this guy much anyhow in the trips in the field way over there. Okay? So we lock him up man to man, and then we have a banjo coverage between these two guys right here. Okay? So basically it's a mini version of cover two. All right? So, this allows us to keep our Hornet backside again, double him, and now basically he's turning into a corner. So if two went vertical and three came out, he exchanged that. These two guys were exchanged. He's helping a wall inside. So it's funnel, funnel, and then to this high safety basically. But we just tell these guys to banjo these two guys, and you have help with the short wall underneath. Okay? So that would be a bulldog. Okay? Any questions with that? Okay. I scraped through that. Um, but again, the best way, basically what I want to come here is an overview of a 425 and what it is kind of. And if you guys have questions, I get, to, one, of my, one of my PowerPoints leaked on the internet one time. Somebody put it out there, just like the base 425. There's a basic PowerPoint you can see. But, and it, a lot of these do clicks in Europe all over the place. And, what, and so I'd give them everything like shit, you're in Europe, you the shit. You're taking all the things, my playbook, take everything, all these PowerPoints I made. But one of them leaked it up in this, I don't even know what the hell it's called. But I've gotten so much from that one little email, one little PowerPoint up there. I've, I've, the people have phoned me all over the place to talk about this name defense. It's unbelievable. It's got me to Europe tw or a dozen times to give clinics. I've been to Miami, Florida. They flew me down there to give to, to install this defense. So basically, if you want me to install it for you, I have no problem coming to your school and giving you a bunch of stuff and all the all the forms, all the charts. Um, if you really wanted to dive into it, I'm more. I love talking. Um, just defensive football. I tried to coach a couple years of offense. I was a big fan. But, um, so I'm just going to lay that out to you. Um, I'll open up with everything, anything you want in the 425. And uh, this is just stuff that I just stole from people. A couple of things. This, this is my cell phone. Uh, don't be shy to ever call me on my cell phone. Um, if you want to write that number down, it's always on me. Um, I don't even use my office phone or my home phone. I just, just call me on my cell phone. Um, emails. Uh, you know, you can always email me with some stuff if you want to feel comfortable calling or texting. Uh, but we have a 7 on 7 Big Dog Challenge on July 13th. I know there's a lot of them out there. Um, this one's pretty, a little different with the Big Dog Challenge, which is kind of cool. It gives an opportunity to bring offense and defense alignment. Some of you guys do a lot of 7 on 7s, and <coughs> that's great. But I think it's, I think one thing that's missing in the summer is for the rest of the team, uh, for the for the O-line, the D-line, to, to just go and compete. And there's no pads on, but we'll do tire flips, we'll do multiple things, um, you know, and it really, it really need to see them bond, you know, I think Lindy had been there before, uh, a couple of you guys in there brought some teams down, but, um, you know, I wish, we, I wish there was more stuff out there for every part instead of just the skill guys running your own point seven so. So if you're interested in that, let me know. You can just bring a big dog team, you don't need to bring a seven on seven team, uh, but it's a Thursday night deal, okay? So, um, 
it's not the Saturday, so we have to waste that. Uh, so it's a Thursday night. So just want to throw that out there. But any questions at all? Just some random stuff before we wrap up. Yeah. Could you go back to your role and just talk through the um, the band or whatever the D player was? His um, rules after jamming. Yeah. Do do? But he's he's basically just a curl fly guy. Now. Okay. Yeah. He's gonna jam the shit out of them because again we're we're lacking over there with with that role. Let the projector die on me or what? There it is. So basically the role is basically he's, he's gonna jam number two, and then he's gonna get a curl flat swing deep for number three. Just like he is in cover four. Because the same exact thing, but he's gonna be kind of working a plank a little bit. Uh, we, I like to shade him a little bit to the outside. So if anything, he's funneling back in because your safety's going to be, you know, worried about it. Your safety's split there between two and three, but with a step towards three, because if he runs a middle seam right here, we're going to have a free safety squeeze at number three. We're going to have a, if he gets a release on the inside or whatever, he's going to be squeezing him, and then we'll do ball time for the outside guy. Um, so because you're expecting some some type of help here, uh, but so it's that's uh, that's up to you. The hardest part about this coverage is if. You know, right here, you can get a quick seal, and he's your D-gap defender. So that this is a bitch a little bit when they run up like an outside zone here. You have to tell the linebackers to get out and go to top and somehow maintain that D-gap. So, but again, you're expecting a you're expecting more of a pass. So you're expecting to run just play solo and it's really known. And, um, so what else? How do you roll the three three? Because we started oh yeah, playing a three five. Yeah, and then we just roll our sand down. Yeah. Um, basically, you have the if you have the um, your attack, you you have a special guy like that. Yeah. Because we, you know, we, one of our, our best our best attack guys are always they're just they were linebackers that were too slow. Um, so literally, we'll take our nose. We'll take our tackle. Well, you can just take your worst guy out. Okay. So a lot of times what we'll do is. Just, it's that guy because our nose is probably the worst guy. Okay. Um, we a lot of times play with four eyes, to be honest. And then we'll take that attack and put them here. <laughs> and all you're doing, you can shift this too. So if, I'm sorry, we're not, we're not taking them all this time. We're, we're keeping the same personnel. On. So squeeze your nose down your tackle. You can play that four eye. Okay, four eye right here. And then you put him right here. So your fits are basically going to be, you know, tell him to take a gap. Or, or you can tell him he's going to fall in the weak side gap, and he's going to be, you know, there, there, and then he's always, you know, you're going to you're going to be solid on your gap fits, um, but he's just coming right here. So a lot of times what we'll do is with this is we'll put him here, but yet we're going to blitz him. So we call this Ricky Lake. You know, the old TV show half the kids don't even know what they don't talk about anymore. So remember Ricky Lake? No. <laughs> Who's that? Going? So he he would just come to him and say Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. Boom, he would go there and he, would, he could dick around here and then come back over here. So basically what you're doing is you could you can keep these guys out if you want. And now it's just turning into your 4-2-5 because it's just a Tim front with two two eyes. Um, but it's just, it's just giving a, a different look. We're sending him regardless. Um, even if it was, uh, uh, if we had no call on and all of a sudden they, they were just playing a straight run read and now all of a sudden if it's a pass, he would just, he would just go. So. We keep it very simple when we, when we go to a three-three stack, uh, and then when you and then when you drop him over here, you know you can just go get to a three-four. Just take him off the off over here. Your tackle kicks down, and then your end is over here. I wish I, I wish I had some film on this because literally we'll be in a four-two-five when before the team's going quick, and we just go move, and all of a sudden boom, you just he would just dart from his attack. Boom, he'd go right here, and linebacker spread out a little bit. And those would shift down, and it would you know. It would be pretty simple. So, um, I don't know. We, we have a sniper. Um, you can create a lot of lists with that. So, but you got to have that special guy. If you don't have that special guy, I don't know if that answer your question at all. Yeah. So, who else? Anybody else got a quick one? Okay. But I appreciate your time. Uh, I'll be sticking around here for a little bit if you want to talk. And if you guys want, um, come down to Stout, whatever you want. Um, we are running a 3 4, so if you got 3 4 stuff, we got basically running the loose stuff. So, um, I'll already even start talking about that. I'll talk about 4 5 if you have questions with that. But, uh
All right, guys, appreciate it.